Lesson 13 Waging Peace Sabbath Afternoon September 16 When the servants of Christ take the shield of faith for their defense and the sword of the Spirit for war, there is danger in the enemy's camp and something must be done. Persecution and reproach only wait for those who are endowed with power from on high to call them into action. When the truth in its simplicity and strength prevails among believers and is brought to bear against the spirit of the world, it will be evident that there is no concord between Christ and Belial. The disciples of Christ must be living examples of the life and spirit of their master. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 407. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. God has provided abundant means for successful warfare against the evil that is in the world. The Bible is the armory where we may equip for the struggle. Our loins must be girt about with truth. Our breastplate must be righteousness. The shield of faith must be in our hand, the helmet of salvation on our brow. And with the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, we are to cut our way through the obstructions and entanglements of sin. The Acts of the Apostles, page 502. Having sought the Lord in the days of prosperity, the king could now rely upon him in the day of adversity. His petitions showed that he was not a stranger to God's wonderful power. It is nothing with thee to help, he pleaded, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God, let not man prevail against thee. The prayer of Asa is one that every Christian believer may fittingly offer. We fight in a warfare not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. See Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. In life's conflict, we must meet evil agencies that have arrayed themselves against the right. Our hope is not in man, but in the living God. With full assurance of faith, we may expect that he will unite his omnipotence with the efforts of human instrumentalities for the glory of his name. Clad with the armor of his righteousness, we may gain the victory over every foe. Prophets and Kings, page 111. Sunday, September 17. The Church a unified army. The Savior's eye penetrates the future. He beholds the broader fields in which, after his death, the disciples are to be witnesses for him. His prophetic glance takes in the experience of his servants through all the ages till he shall come the second time. He shows his followers the conflicts they must meet. He reveals the character and plan of the battle. He lays open before them the perils they must encounter, the self-denial that will be required. He desires them to count the cost, that they may not be taken unawares by the enemy. Their warfare is not to be waged against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, Revised Version. They are to contend with supernatural forces, but they are assured of supernatural help. All the intelligences of heaven are in this army, and more than angels are in the ranks. The Holy Spirit, the representative of the captain of the Lord's host, comes down to direct the battle. Our infirmities may be many, our sins and mistakes grieve us, but the grace of God is for all who seek it with contrition. The power of omnipotence is enlisted in behalf of those who trust in God. The Desire of Ages, page 352. 
The Church of Christ may be fitly compared to an army. The life of every soldier is one of toil, hardship, and danger. On every hand are vigilant foes, led on by the prince of the powers of darkness, who never slumbers and never deserts his post. Whenever a Christian is off his guard, this powerful adversary makes a sudden and violent attack. Unless the members of the church are active and vigilant, they will be overcome by his devices. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 394. The Master calls for gospel workers. Who will respond? All who enter the army are not to be generals, captains, sergeants, or even corporals. All have not the care and responsibility of leaders. There is hard work of other kinds to be done. Some must dig trenches and build fortifications. Some are to stand as sentinels, some to carry messages. While there are but few officers, it requires many soldiers to form the rank and file of the army. Yet its success depends upon the fidelity of every soldier. One man's cowardice or treachery may bring disaster upon the entire army. There is earnest work to be done by us individually if we would fight the good fight of faith. Eternal interests are at stake. We must put on the whole armor of righteousness. We must resist the devil. And we have the sure promise that he will be put to flight. The church is to conduct an aggressive warfare, to make conquests for Christ, to rescue souls from the power of the enemy. God and holy angels are engaged in this warfare. Let us please him who has called us to be soldiers. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, pages 394 and 395. Monday, September 18. Belt and Breastplate After Christ's ascension, Satan again counseled with his angels, and with bitter hatred against God's government, told them that while he retained his power and authority upon earth, their efforts must be tenfold stronger against the followers of Jesus. They had prevailed nothing against Christ, but must overthrow his followers if possible. In every generation, they must seek to ensnare those who would believe in Jesus. He related to his angels that Jesus had given his disciples power to rebuke them and cast them out, and to heal those whom they should afflict. Then Satan's angels went forth like roaring lions, seeking to destroy the followers of Jesus. Early Writings, page 191 Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 there is absolutely no safeguard against evil but truth. No man can stand firm for right in whose heart the truth does not abide. There is only one power that can make and keep us steadfast, the power of God imparted to us through the grace of Christ. There are many in the church who take it for granted that they understand what they believe, but until controversy arises, they do not know their own weakness. When separated from those of like faith and compelled to stand singly and alone to explain their belief, they will be surprised to see how confused are their ideas of what they had accepted as truth. The Lord calls upon all who believe His Word to awake out of sleep. God's Amazing Grace, page 30 We must put on every piece of the armor and then stand firm. The Lord has honored us by choosing us as his soldiers. Let us fight bravely for him, maintaining the right in every transaction. Put on as your breastplate that divinely protected righteousness, which it is the privilege of all to wear. This will protect your spiritual life. All who have put on the robe of Christ's righteousness will stand before him as chosen and faithful and true. Satan has no power to pluck them out of the hand of the Savior. Not one soul who in penitence and faith has claimed his protection will Christ permit to pass under the enemy's power. Each one will have a close struggle to overcome sin in his own heart. 
This is at times a very painful and discouraging work because as we see the deformities in our character, we keep looking at them when we should look to Jesus and put on the robe of his righteousness. Everyone who enters the pearly gates of the city of God will enter there as a conqueror and his greatest conquest will have been the conquest of self. God's Amazing Grace, page 31. Tuesday, September 19. Shoes, the church wages peace. The gospel is a message of peace. Christianity is a system which, received and obeyed, would spread peace, harmony, and happiness throughout the earth. The religion of Christ will unite in close brotherhood all who accept its teachings. Men cannot manufacture peace. Human plans for the purification and uplifting of individuals or of society will fail of producing peace because they do not reach the heart. The only power that can create or perpetuate true peace is the grace of Christ. When this is implanted in the heart, it will cast out the evil passions that cause strife and dissension. The faces of men and women who walk and work with God express the peace of heaven. They are surrounded with the atmosphere of heaven. For these souls the kingdom of God has begun. The Lord is soon coming. Talk it. Pray it. Believe it. Make it a part of the life. Gird on the Christian armor and be sure that your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. God's Amazing Grace, page 32. Brethren and sisters, Will you put on the Christian armor? Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, you will be prepared to walk from house to house, carrying the truth to the people. Sometimes you will find it trying to do this kind of work. But if you go forth in faith, the Lord will go before you and will let his light shine upon your pathway. Entering the homes of your neighbors to sell or to give away our literature and in humility to teach them the truth, you will be accompanied by the light of heaven which will abide in these homes. The Review and Herald, May 24, 1906 He who is shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace will walk as Christ walked. He will be able to speak right words and to speak them in love. He will not try to drive home God's message of truth. He will deal tenderly with every heart, realizing that the Spirit will impress the truth on those who are susceptible to divine impressions. Never will he be vehement in his manner. Every word spoken will have a softening, subduing influence. Evangelism, page 174. There are many souls to be saved. In word and deed, represent Christ to all with whom you come in contact. Let all see that your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and goodwill to men. Wonderful are the results we shall see if we enter into the work imbued with the Spirit of Christ. Help will come in our necessity if we carry the work forward in righteousness, mercy, and love. Truth will triumph and bear away the victory. Evangelism, page 563. Wednesday, September 20. Shield, Helmet, and Sword All who range themselves under the blood-stained banner of the Prince of Life will henceforth count Satan as a foe and will in God's strength oppose him as a deadly enemy. They will take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And what will they do in order to hold vantage ground? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 we should be quick to discern danger. We should see the hateful character of sin and should expel it from the soul. The doers of the word know that in Jesus there is strength, which becomes their own by faith. 
They are clothed with the righteousness that God will accept, for it is the righteousness of Christ. Clad in this armor of God, the panoply of heaven, they successfully resist the serpent's wiles. In Heavenly Places, page 48. I asked the angel why there was no more faith and power in Israel. He said, Ye let go of the arm of the Lord too soon. Press your petitions to the throne and hold on by strong faith. The promises are sure. Believe ye receive the things ye ask for, and ye shall have them. I was then pointed to Elijah. He was subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly. His faith endured the trial. Seven times he prayed before the Lord, and at last the cloud was seen. I saw that we had doubted the sure promises and wounded the Savior by our lack of faith. Said the angel, Gird the armor about thee, and above all take the shield of faith, for that will guard the heart, the very life, from the fiery darts of the wicked. If the enemy can lead the desponding to take their eyes off from Jesus and look to themselves and dwell upon their own unworthiness instead of dwelling upon the worthiness of Jesus, his love, his merits, and his great mercy, he will get away their shield of faith and gain his object. They will be exposed to his fiery temptations. The weak should therefore look to Jesus and believe in him. They then exercise faith. Early Writings, page 73. A familiar acquaintance with the scriptures sharpens the discerning powers and fortifies the soul against the attacks of Satan. The Bible is the sword of the Spirit, which will never fail to vanquish the adversary. It is the only true guide in all matters of faith and practice. The reason why Satan has so great control over the minds and hearts of men is that they have not made the word of God the man of their counsel, and all their ways have not been tried by the true test. The Bible will show us what course we must pursue to become heirs of glory. Our High Calling, page 31. Thursday September 21. Practicing Battlefield Prayer True faith lays hold of and claims the promised blessing before it is realized and felt. We must send up our petitions in faith within the second veil and let our faith take hold of the promised blessing and claim it as ours. We are then to believe that we receive the blessing because our faith has hold of it and according to the word it is ours. What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Here is faith, naked faith, to believe that we receive the blessing even before we realize it. When the promised blessing is realized and enjoyed, faith is swallowed up. But many suppose they have much faith when sharing largely of the Holy Spirit and that they cannot have faith unless they feel the power of the Spirit. Such confound faith with the blessing that comes through faith. The very time to exercise faith is when we feel destitute of the Spirit. When thick clouds of darkness seem to hover over the mind, then is the time to let living faith pierce the darkness and scatter the clouds. True faith rests on the promises contained in the Word of God, and those only who obey that Word can claim its glorious promises. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. John chapter 15, verse 7. Early Writings, page 72. We have a soldier's duty to perform, victories to gain, for we must not be ignorant of Satan's devices. We pray and then watch lest Satan shall steal upon us and make us forget our need of prayer, our need of vigilance and watching thereunto. In the Christian warfare, unless there is a sharp eye on the adversary and a sharp eye on ourselves, we shall be led into Satan's snare. Our security depends on the state of our heart. God help us to take heed to ourselves, or we shall certainly lose heaven. 
little departures from right, little indulgences, seem a trifling thing at present, but Satan will lead us on a track that will separate us from righteousness and from God. We want not our ways, but God's ways. We want to strive with all the powers of being to bruise Satan under our feet and be sure that we are right with God, that we have a clear title to our immortal inheritance. This Day with God, page 27. Our prayers are to be as earnest and persistent as was the petition of the needy friend who asked for the loaves at midnight. The more earnestly and steadfastly we ask, the closer will be our spiritual union with Christ. We shall receive increased blessings because we have increased faith. Our part is to pray and believe, watch unto prayer, watch and cooperate with the prayer hearing God. Bear in mind that we are laborers together with God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. Christ's Object Lessons, page 146. For further reading, My Life Today, Oh God, Help Me to Higher Levels, page 105, and My Life Today, Paul's Shout of Victory, page 326.